Salam sejahtera anda bersama saya Rizal Zulkapti dan ini Awani Global. Pada Oktober tahun lepas, seorang guru di Perancis Samuel Paty telah dibunuh oleh seorang penganut agama Islam berketurunan Chechen. Serangan ini meningkatkan kemarahan dalam masyarakat di Perancis dan pemimpin Islam di negara itu mengecam pembunuhan itu. Namun institusi dan komuniti Islam di Perancis didakwa masih diletakkan di bawah tekanan yang memuncak dan juga pemantauan. Presiden Perancis Emmanuel Macron meletakkan Islam dan juga umat Islam di tengah insiden tersebut dan menyifatkannya sebagai satu serangan biasa pengganas Islam dan menyifatkan pembunuhan berkenaan sebagai satu ancaman kepada kebebasan bersuara di Perancis. Dan juga Macron turut mengeluarkan kenyataan yang Islam adalah sebuah agama yang secara globalnya berada dalam krisis dan menggesa reformasi dilakukan ke atas Islam. Ini juga menimbulkan kemarahan pemimpin umat Islam di serata dunia dan ada juga negara yang mengambil tindakan memboikot produk keluaran Perancis di negara mereka. Dan kita ingin membincangkan laporan tahunan terkini European Islamophobia Report 2020 yang akan diterbitkan pada Mei 2021 bersama editor bersama Enes Bayratli dari Turki. Enes juga adalah pengarah pengajian Eropah di SETA Institute untuk Kajian Politik, Ekonomi dan Sosial di Turki. Izinkan saya meneruskan perbincangan dalam bahasa Inggeris. Enes, um, thank you for joining us. Enes, we're currently undergoing a social change brought forth by COVID-19. And this pandemic has also highlighted the xenophobic nature of some communities around the world. Tell us how has the xenophobia perhaps changed during the pandemic? Uh, It didn't change much. Uh, however, some uh, circles in the West, especially in Europe, has also used COVID to attack Muslim communities, to accuse them uh, uh, and make them responsible for the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, and of course, this is uh, this doesn't really reflect the reality. Uh, no ethnicity or uh, uh, religious uh, group is responsible for the COVID as far as, as we know. It's a global pandemic. However, they even use this to attack and marginalize Muslims uh, in, the, uh, in the West. Tell us about the incidents uh, that happened in 2020 uh, that came about because of this perhaps misunderstanding of COVID-19 and also uh, Islamophobia. Um, There were some, uh, there were some uh, uh, criticism towards Muslims, like in Germany or in Austria, especially that uh, the Muslims who, uh, are, whose origins are from the Balkan countries, who went to holiday for their uh, home countries for some summer holidays, and then when they return, uh, and they were accused for the spread of the coronavirus. But we know that, uh, I mean. Uh, Uh, millions of people are traveling in Europe, all around the Europe, for business purposes or for holiday purposes. Of course, this is an, uh, a very racist and uh, xenophobic uh, attitude towards Muslims. But uh, I mean, the Islamophobes, they don't need any, I mean, uh, they, they use every opportunity to marginalize, securitize uh, or demonize the Muslims. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this is just another example. And, and I want to uh, perhaps bring your attention to Dr. Ugur Sahin and also Dr. Ozem Turechi. Uh, these, uh, these two individuals developed the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID vaccines. Um, they were uh, a vaccine. They were Turkish and Iranian immigrants. Um, could this perhaps help the situation a bit uh, in terms of understanding what really happened? Um. I mean, these two persons, they are uh, being represented as the good example of uh, integration into the German society. Um, I mean, the, the Muslims, especially Turks, they migrated to uh, Germany since uh, from the 1960s as uh, guest workers. Of course, then afterwards, they have uh, uh, they stayed there and then they became some of them, uh, half of them actually st st uh, became citizens of country. But there was an endless discussion about the, this, uh, the integration of the Turkish diaspora, Turkish community in Germany. Although now uh, there are the, the Turks there, they are living in the fourth generation and they are already uh, integrated into society. I mean, they raised there, they were born there, they pay taxes, they are citizens, they are going to school, they, some of them uh, graduate of high school, universities, some of them are good professionals, uh, 
uh, you know, established people in academia, in SBC, in the, in the scientific uh, also area. However, still, it is, I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 this is, I mean, um, the, the, some circles in Germany are uh, claiming that the Turkish diaspora is not uh, integrated into Germany. However, we see with the Ur Shahin that uh, that uh, lots of people are doing their you know uh, their job. I mean, they are already integrated. However, uh, they are being represented as the uh, you know the uh, how to uh, say it. I mean, the um, uh, some uh, you know unique examples of this integration, and the rest of the society is not integrated. And we had another example of Mesut Özil. He was a uh, he was a international player at the uh, German national team. He was so successful. I mean, he he was an international player. I mean, and then he moved to UK. However, because of the racist remarks and the accusations against him, he had to drop from the German national team. This shows us that there is a problem with this uh, idea of integration. What is really asked from the uh, Turkish community or, the old, or generally put to, from foreigners and Muslims in Germany or in continental Europe, we can uh, generalize. Uh, it's the assimilation, assimilation of the into the, the uh, you know the majority society, and this assimilation requires that you drop your own culture, your religious, and uh, and you became uh, you know non visible in the in the majority society. Of course, this is something against the human rights. Uh, and uh, that's why there is this tension. Um, tell, tell us about the uh, European Islamophobia report that was uh, started about five years ago. Um, what did you get in 2019 and what can we hope to see in 2020 um, from the report, the latest version of the report? Uh, you mentioned structural and institutional um, racism and uh, also bigotry. Uh, but tell us more about that. Has that perhaps change? Because we see in the US, there's the Black Lives Matter <clears throat> movement. Did that also perhaps gain traction in uh, Europe? Um, European Islamophobia report, uh, we started, it's an annual report. We started this 2015 and since 2015, we published this report uh, uh, every year. And it um, covers almost all Europe. Uh, there, there are 32 countries now covered in the report and each country reports are written by experts or civil society uh, activists living in those countries and it, with this report we aim to raise awareness among uh, European uh, public but also European uh, uh, decision makers, politicians uh, because this um, problem uh, have been uh, have been uh, neglected and uh, for a quite long time uh, there were uh, I mean discussions that uh, I mean the, the most of the politicians they have denied that there was a problem with Islamophobia and with this report we have shown that it's a widespread it's a widespread problem in almost all of Europe in the in the West Europe but also in the Eastern Europe where uh, you don't have any, uh, I mean, uh, uh, meaningful Muslim minority living there. I mean, it's almost uh, Muslims are non-existent in Poland, let's say, or in Czech Republic. However, even on those in those countries, you have a very strong anti-Muslim racism, especially if you look at the language of the media and the politicians. Um, so the report uh, is accessible online. Uh, and uh, it has contributed to the, uh, to raise the awareness of uh, of this problem. However, it has been also attacked by the far right circles and the far right politicians in Europe. Uh, as unfortunately, also the the co-editor of this report, a co colleague of mine, uh, we ha we are two editors, uh, me and the Farid Hafiz. He is living in the in Austria. He's an Austrian citizen. He has been targeted by the Austrian state because of his criticism towards Austria. His house has been uh, uh, was raided by the anti-terror uh, police teams, and he was accused of uh, you know ridiculous uh, uh, crimes without any base. And uh, and this shows us that uh, it's even uh, it's even much much deeper. I mean, this problem goes, but we just start to you know uh, uh, scratch the surface of the uh, of the problem. Uh, 2020, 
uh, unfortunately, with each year, we see a deterioration of the, uh, the, the situation of the Muslims in Europe. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there are not much positive signs. There are some positive developments, but these are only uh, very few, and uh, it doesn't, you know, uh, affect the, the, the whole discussion and rhetoric uh, about Muslims. So, uh, 2020, we have seen two states, uh, France and Austria, uh, has become the hub and the hotspots of the Islamophobia. Especially in France, we see um, uh, the French state uh, targeted the Muslim civil society, uh, Muslim NGOs. Uh, and uh, there were talks about political Islam, the, and the, in, especially in Austria also, the current prime minister of Austria, Chancellor uh, Sebastian Kurz, he wants to criminalize political Islam. Mm -hmm. Whatever that may be, how it is defined is anyone's guess. I mean, uh, political Islam can be defined in any way. Uh, and uh, and uh, of course, there is no discussion about Christian, uh, I mean, uh, um, um, uh, political Christianity, right? There are mm -hmm. old, uh, Christian Democrat parties all around Europe, uh, uh, and if the Christians can use Christianity as a base of, for a political activity or activism, why not Muslims? But mm -hmm. uh, this has this is being criminalized in Austria nowadays, and there is this discussion about uh, criminalization or uh, banning of political Islam, and by using these, I mean uh, the Muslim civil society has been targeted, uh, and uh, of course this is a very uh, serious, uh, I mean, uh, development, especially the France, what is happening in France and in, in Austria is very worrying development uh, for the sake of, for the, for the future of the European democracies. Bertemu kembali, kita membincangkan berkenaan dengan laporan Islamofobia uh, yang diterbitkan oleh SETA uh, bersama dengan Anas Bayratli, uh, editor bersama laporan tersebut. Anas, you mentioned about um, about the uh, perhaps discrimination against um, uh, Muslim political parties in in uh, in Austria, uh, but this is uh, Europe. Europe has the European Convention on Human Rights, and Article 9 specifically says that um, it guarantees the freedom uh, to practice one's religion and belief. Um, so, so why is there this, um, um, you know, disconnect between the ECHR and also what's happening on the ground that guarantees uh, the ability for one to practice uh, their beliefs and their religious beliefs? Um, uh, let me correct uh, one, one uh, small issue. That not, mm -hmm. There are no political parties in Austria, Muslim political parties. It's political activism that I am talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, mm -hmm. the, of course, there are uh, uh, these principles of human rights and uh, religious freedom, but if uh, those principles uh, are translated into, into, the, uh, into the social life, and the, in the nation states uh, laws, it's another problem, another question. Uh, so these are general principles. But we see that increasingly the um, uh, religious freedoms of Muslims are, <clears throat> are uh, limited by using the discussions around uh, uh, secularism and laïcité in France. Uh, for instance, uh, it is uh, claimed that uh, the presence of the hijab and the headscarf is against the principle of laicity and secularism. And by using these, the headscarf is banned at the French universities. And now there is uh, also this new law and, uh, you know, uh, under uh, uh, up until the age of the 18, it is uh, also forbidden, I mean, to wear the hijab at the, the state institutions and the universities and schools. Uh, so you see that there are clash of principles and how these principles are interpreted. And so it's a constant battle. So these are not given, these freedoms are not given, uh, you know, uh, and uh, we see that the civil, so I mean, civil rights, uh, uh, the, the battle around civil rights, and uh, uh, especially in, 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 the, in the US, it's a long process. If, I mean, if you change the law, it doesn't mean that you solve the problem. You know, it's, uh, that's why we are talking about structural racism. 
In mm. United States, there is uh, this uh, constant uh, battle and uh, 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 around, I mean, the civil rights movement since the 1960s, and it has been 50, 60 years now. Uh, however, still we see that the people with the black uh, skin uh, are targeted and murdered on the street by the police in the uh, in the in the in the United States. We did even have a uh, you know American president uh, with a you know with a colored skin, right? But mm -hmm. did, this didn't change the problem on the on the on the ground. So this is a much much bigger problem. And uh, so the fact that the European Convention on Human Rights has a principle on religious freedom doesn't mean that you don't have any problem. Uh, uh, on the contrary, with the increasing securitization of Muslims and the association of Islam with the terrorism after 9-11 especially, uh, we see that by using this uh, 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 and instrumentalizing the war on terror, the mm -hmm. religious rights of Muslims have been limited all around Europe. So what measures uh, can your report recommend to the policymakers in uh, Europe, I know your report is also written by different individuals uh, situated in these different countries. So they know the nuances, they understand how policymakers in different countries could and would react to the report. Um, what recommendations do you have for Europe uh, as a whole and perhaps some key countries uh, in, in Europe? Uh, first and foremost, the problem has to be acknowledged. So there are still I mean, the uh, circles in Europe, and this is not a minority, the overwhelming majority of the European politicians, they do not recognize the problem of Islamophobia. They deny that there is a problem of Islamophobia. Most of them are saying that Islamophobia, the term itself, is just a tool to uh, um, uh, silence the, the criticism uh, of Islam. And this is being used by the political uh, and the, the, by Islamists. Uh, however, uh, I have to say this: um, Islamophobia means anti-Muslim racism. But we don't say that every criticism of Muslims and the religion of Islam is Islamophobic. Muslims and Islam can be criticized, and Muslims are criticizing themselves already. In the, in the if you look at the Muslim world, there is a huge and uh, very harsh. Uh, discussions, criticism about Muslims, the, the social problems of Muslims, this is very normal. However, uh, the issue at stake here is how do, you, how do you do this criticism? If you essentialize and if you generalize all Muslims and if you uh, uh, make racist remarks, then this is, a, this is the problem. So uh, our first recommendation that Islamophobia has to be acknowledged as a problem. And uh, it has to be, uh, uh, this problem has to be articulated by the politici politicians, by the political, uh, by the decision makers. And it has to be uh, taken into as a, as a hate, uh, separate hate crime category into national uh, records so that we can see and we can have a clear picture how much and how many Islamophobic crimes have been committed in, the, in those national countries. And the secondly, uh, there has to be a change of rhetoric about Muslims by politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we see that the Muslims are associated with uh, terrorism all the time, and all these uh, discussions and the marginalization of Muslims, of course, leads to violence on the street. So mm -hmm. these are two uh, big recommendations. Of course, there are others, many, that can be done. And of course, European Union has to play a big, big role here. But up until now, we've seen that the European Union Although there were some small steps, still very silent about Islamophobia. And the European Parliament has to take a decision about Islamophobia, as it has done on, on uh, anti, uh, uh, anti semitism also anti-Roma and anti-Gypsyism. Uh, so it has to be, it has to also take a you know decision against Islamophobia. Uh, but up until now, we've seen that these uh, steps have not been taken. And um. I think uh, I want to touch upon what you said earlier about leaders and, and being responsible uh, to curb and to end Islamophobia. Uh, President uh, the, the Emmanuel Macron, uh, immediately after the attack um, uh, on Samuel Petty, uh, said that Islam globally is in crisis and calls for the reform uh, uh, of Islam globally. Tell us about that and how leaders and, and their words 
uh, and what it means to people on the street looking for excuse um, to launch uh, Islamophobic attacks uh, against uh, communities or individuals um, in their particular countries. Do you think these leaders should be more responsible with their words and actions? Uh, look, I mean, there is a crisis in the Muslim world. You know, mm. this is, everybody knows about this, right? And the Muslims know about themselves. I mean, they know, they, they are aware of this problem. Uh, if Macron means that there is a, these problems in the Muslim world, of course we know about this. But if he means that there are theological problems in the Islam and this has to be, Islam has to be reformed, it is not of uh, his business, right? Because Macron is a, you know, uh, France is a secular state and the uh, secular I mean, states they don't interfere with the religious affairs of uh, other, other, other religious communities. So can Macron call for a reform of Judaism or Buddhism or Christianity? It's not his business. Mm -hmm. Of course, Muslims are discussing these the theologians among themselves, and it's their business. They will discuss this, and uh, there are different sects in the Muslim world, and Muslim, you know, Islam is not, uh, you know, there are different ways in Islam, and the Muslims are aware of this. But if... Uh, nation states uh, aims to, you know, engineer a European Islam or a French Islam. That's the, where, where the problem starts. Uh, of course, this is, of, of course, against the uh, principle of laicity and secularism because uh, uh, this is, the, you know, the separation of church and the state. And it means, of course, state does not also interfere with the church affairs. And here we see that uh, Macron wants to reform Islam according to his own taste. Uh, of course, this is not acceptable. And on the other hand, this shows also us that the, the problem of Islamophobia very much a problem of the uh, elites. So here we do not talk about uh, um, uh, misunderstandings of common people on the street about Islam in Europe. Of mm -hmm. course, there are misunderstandings and the stereotypes about Muslims. And this is normal, actually. I mean, also Muslims or other religious communities have different stereotypes and uh, misunderstandings about each other. But if this translates into politics, in the, into policies of the state, then that where the problem starts. And if you know there is a uh, you know uh, a campaign of hatred and negative rhetoric about a religious community, you know um, carried out by elites, media elites, intellectuals, academics, or politicians, this is where the problem starts. And this is what actually is happening in Europe. The elites are. Uh, uh, mostly responsible for the Islamophobic uh, wave that we are seeing in Europe. The, the, the elites of political elites and the academia and the intellectuals, uh, they are the, uh, the runner, forerunners, or they are the leading, leading they, are, they are leading the Islamophobia uh, industry in, 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 in Europe. Um, briefly before we end the interview, and as um, tell us about the other key findings um, um, that you'll be published in the 2020 report. Uh, what are some of the most uh, worrying um, findings that uh, you could tell us? The most worrying development that we sign, uh, we see the signs of uh, uh, a wave of uh, Islamophobic terror attacks against Muslims. So we mm -hmm. see signs of very radical uh, radicalization, strong radicalization against Muslims, a violent rhetoric, which translates into terror attacks against Muslims. Unfortunately, there are signs that the far-right far radicalism is organizing itself, is, uh, and there are different networks in, in Europe, not only in, in Europe, but it's also, it is also connected to other far-right circles all around, uh, 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 around the globe, like we have seen with the Tarant, Although he was living in the New Zealand, he was connected to far-right circles in Europe. And through this ideology, uh, he uh, is radicalized uh, to the point that he attacked and killed Muslims in, the, in, a, in a mosque and innocent people, right? So we see that uh, a, a terror wave, Islamophobic terror wave, is about to hit Europe, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And Muslim institutions, mosques, schools, angels, they are under threat and they have to be protected. And of course, uh, especially European uh, security uh, institutions, police, intelligence services has to tackle this problem very seriously. I mean, uh, especially uh, they have to uh, observe and monitor far-right radical uh, groups, terror groups, uh, terror organizations, but also there are many lone wolves 
uh, and uh, and they have to be put under surveillance and uh, and uh, there has to be also um, uh, the, the, the state has to develop um, why countering violent radic uh, radicalism uh, extremism programs uh, anti radicalization programs uh, the radicalization programs against uh, far right groups in order to tackle this problem but as as long i mean uh, as far as we see uh, when it comes to the radicalization programs it's all about muslims mm -hmm. uh, there are muslims who are radicalized and this has to be tackled with i mean i don't i don't i don't discuss this point However, there are also far right and far left even circles who are radicalized enough and who are ready to carry out terror attacks. And we've seen that there are increasing terror attacks against Muslims, like it happened in Hanau in Germany last year. There were some other terror attacks in France. Uh, there were some in, in the UK, okay. uh, Anders Breivik, etc. Okay, thank you very much, Anas uh, Bayrakli. And the report will come out uh, in May? Uh, we are planning to publish it soon, so it may take another one month uh, because, because okay. of COVID issue, uh, we, we run into some troubles, but we will publish it as soon as possible. Okay, uh, itu tadi uh, Anas Barakli dari Turki membincangkan berkenaan dengan laporan ter, uh, tahunan terkini European Islamophobia Report 2020 yang akan diterbitkan pada sekitar Mei ataupun Jun 2021. Anas ada, ada, adalah juga uh, pengarah pengajian uh, Eropah di SETA Institute untuk Kajian Politik, Ekonomi dan juga Sosial di Turki. Terima kasih kerana bersama saya Riza Zulkapri di uh, Awani Global teruskan bersama kami untuk perbincangan dalam dan juga luar negara. Salam hormat.